the creative process. We experience its application in art, music, athletics, writing, architecture, but do we really understand what it is? We're enriched by the results of the creative process every day, but what's actually going on behind it? What it is, is largely invisible to us. Today we explore the creative process through the work of one of the most successful and inventive artistic photographers in the world, Robert Weingarten. That's the light I was waiting for. Weingarten's photography, which constantly defies category, is in museums and galleries around the world. I think that one of the keys to expanding your creative intelligence is to have an openness to creativity and a desire to do it. I think the, that's one of the most important constraints is that people don't have a desire to do it and aren't open to new ideas. His innovative Portraits Without People series, images composed to describe his subject without actually revealing their physical presence, recently opened here at the Marlboro Gallery in New York City. Kim Schmidt is the gallery's director. How does she evaluate creative work? It might begin with looking at technique, a message that somebody has to say. What are they trying to say and how are they trying to say it? Actor Danny Aiello is a wine garden fan. But you know what this denotes for me? Strength. Tremendous strength. I see a courthouse. You know, I also see the Coliseum. I know it's not there, but right. that's what I'm seeing. I see the Yankee Stadium, another edifice that is, is one of power. What I see here is strength. The photographer and I met in his studio in Malibu, California to discuss the thinking behind his work and get some tips on how we can all be more creative. Bob, thank you so much for taking the time to help us understand a little bit more about the uh, creative process. My pleasure. When I say creative process, what does that mean to you? To me, creative process is the act of seeing something differently than anybody's ever seen it before. The common expression of thinking outside the box, uh, most people are constrained because they've seen the box, right? You have to first forget about ever seeing the box to think outside the box, and, and a lot of people can't let that go. Weingarten's Portraits Without People concept is an innovation never before attempted by a photographer. At the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, Shannon Pyrich is the associate curator of the Photographic History Collection. She selected Portraits Without People to be shown at the Smithsonian. Bob Weingarten is part of a digital history of creativity. Bob's work fits in this large body of work because he asks, where's the line between portraiture and visual biography? So when you look at a portrait, you think, oh, I know who that person is. Bob says, you can't know who that person is because it's just a moment in time and it's only their physicality. Who you are is not really necessarily what you look like. Tell us about Hank Aaron Portraits Without People. All right, let's start on the lower right because this is the jersey that Hank Aaron wore in the Negro League, mm -hmm. and the Clowns was the name of the team. On the upper right, you have a railroad car that unfortunately he had to ride in and sometimes stay overnight in because a number of the hotels in those years wouldn't accept African Americans. So he went with the team, but then he had to sleep in this railroad car. And this is the actual railroad car. It's in a museum in Atlanta at Turner Field. I'm sure it's going to be something that I'm going to be very proud of. Just being involved with it is something that I think that I am very, very proud of. So Weingarten takes hundreds of pictures that describe his subject's personality. And then I would put them together in what I call a translucent composite. I wanted to be able to see through all these different layers of a personality by peeling back layer by layer by layer. So I created this composite on the computer that sees through layer to layer to layer. By the time it's done, there have been countless proofs, countless prints, countless going back to the computer on detail, refinements, slight changes, uh, and, and the process takes literally months. What I learned today, patience. Yeah. This is what I learned. If you don't have the patience for the detail to get it done. You could have the greatest strategy, the greatest creativity, but you're never going to create a great work of art, a great new product, a great book, nothing. Weingarten's landmark 6.30 AM series is inspired by the variations of light captured by Monet in his paintings of the cathedral at Rouen. 
I was always intrigued by Monet's use and interest in the color of light. Nobody had ever done a study, at least to my knowledge, of how different the light could be at the same exact spot, at the same exact time of day, at the same exact angle. I decided to take the same shot from my home in Malibu for a year, at least every day that I was home, for a year at exactly 6.30 a.m. to demonstrate the huge change in chroma over the period of the year. Can you give us some tips on how somebody can become more creative? Every form of creativity, every mode of creativity has building blocks. So first you have to arm yourselves with the building blocks of the art form or, the, or whatever you're going to do. If you're going to write a novel, you better know your grammar. If you're going to do photography, you should know the technical aspects of it. And you should know it well enough to be able to ignore it. Number two is that I think that people set the hurdles too high and therefore they never get to do art. Because as, as has been said before, the perfect is the enemy of the good. You have to be willing to be able to make mistakes. Three, um, I like to quote something that Picasso once said. Picasso said that every act of creation is first an act of destruction. Hmm. We shouldn't be afraid to take down something that's a given to create something new. And Picasso obviously did it with Cubism. Bob, I want to thank you for spending time with us and helping us all understand creativity a little bit better. It's my great pleasure to be here with you. Now this is Bill Boggs in Bob Weingarten's beautiful studio in Malibu for my generation.